Um, I have a lot of respect for the Honourable Member for Wigan, who is not in her place, but I know is coming back very shortly. But I have to say, I thought her speech was pretty dire, her allegations silly, and her withdrawal pretty mealy mouth. For the record, for the record for the Labour front bench and anyone else who wants to listen, I make no apology for persuading government to treat the Isle of Wight like every other island in the UK. Yeah. The island is the most underrepresented place in this country. I have twice as many constituents. We are separated by sea from the mainland, and I have to fight three times as hard to get any government to listen to me. I make no apologies for speaking with passion and determination, and I make no apologies for fighting tooth and nail. And I'll tell the Labour front bench something else. The, uh, the first round of levelling up, we weren't in the first round of levelling up. And you know what? By last December, we were. And we are now getting a new crane for white shipyards, which is dozens of apprenticeships. And I'm proud of that. So if the yeah. Labour Party wants to insinuate yeah. anything about that, they are welcome to. I will make one final piece of advice before I go on to the real issues here. The reason why there are so many of us here, not only in this debate, but in this House, is maybe, just maybe, because we have a reputation for delivering for our folks. Yeah. And that is something that I think the opposite side of the House may want to take into account. Anyway, that is almost a minute or a half of my life. I'm not going to get back. So moving on to the substance of the bill. Um, the, presentation of Tor the presentation of Tory MPs somehow saying no, no, no to change is, is, is not true. We see the hundreds of thousands of unbuilt permissions and we worry. We know our youngsters are difficult, can't get onto the housing ladder and we worry. We see the loss of landscape in my patch celebrated by Tennyson and Turner and Keats and many others and we worry. And we see lazy developers relying on greenfield sites and we worry. We want the system to change. But what we don't want is a system that keeps on giving to developers who then give nothing back, who pocket development and then say, more please, like some inverted Oliver Twist. What we want is people who deliver for our communities, but also for the nation. With the honourable gentleman. I, I, I'd really like not to, only because I've got one minute for... OK. <laughs> I know he was desperate to get an extra minute back. I mean, uh, he's making a really impassioned speech, and I agree with a lot of what he said so far. But on the point about developers snapping up greenfield sites, in my constituency, there's a site called Udney Park Playingfields in Teddington, where actually the local community rose up, and thanks to a legal challenge, it's now protected green space. The developer, however, will not now sell the site back to the community, despite a, a good bid to turn it into playing fields, because they paid over the odds, and they're waiting years, they'll wait years and years until planning policy changes and it's going to rack and ruin. Don't we need powers to tackle that? Order, order. We do need to have short interventions because there are plenty of people who have actually put in to speak who... Bob Seeley. The Honourable Lady makes a very good point and she will probably have to wait 10 to 15 years uh, and there will be a form of planning blight on that land and, and I completely agree and we have the same with an awful development in my patch called Penny Feathers which I wish had never been built and I wish the Secretary of State or indeed the wonderful Minister sitting here had the powers to say no to that and we could go back to having a, a vineyard and greenfields there as it should be. Um, just on to the amendments, and I'm very supportive of, of previous speeches from many uh, of colleagues on this side of the House, just looking briefly at those amendments. Targets, they are the bane of so many of our colleagues. They need to be advisory, not mandatory, and I would remind the government that neighbourhood plan areas tend to say yes to more development because they get the chance to shape them. So if we don't feel development is being shoved down our throats but we can shape it more, the government will have greater success. The Secretary of State heard about the pernicious loopholes made a few days ago by the Honourable uh, Friend from Wantage and others about the, the vandalism of triple SIs, the way that people gain the system corruptly. Why is character not grounds for opposing development? Why can't we shut down these loopholes that do such damage to our countryside, to national parks, to AONBs? I know this isn't a tax bill, but fundamentally we need to find a really effective way of changing the economics from greenfield to brownfield site, so the oh, half yeah. million or a yeah. million properties on brownfield sites get developed. We have a second homes problem as well, not only on the island, but Cornwall, or the Lake District and all these other areas. We need to respect property rights, but communities in my patch, Seaview and Bembridge and Yarmouth, must not become Potemkin villages, which are empty for much of the year. We have to have a community that stays there. And finally, so there are going to be a series of amendments. I assure him that they will be as supportive as they can be. But I will finish on one point, because it is, again, something that is close to my heart here. Compulsory purchase. I want the government 
to give more powers to councils for compulsory purchase.